Welcome back to the channel, everyone. For those of you who are returning, if you are new and just discovered this guide, you should probably check out parts 4, 3, 2, and 1. Uh, that way you know what's going on here in part 5. We're going to go over some of the other types of model kits that I mentioned near the end of uh, part 4. We're going to go in more detail with them in this part. So let's, uh, you know, let's get started. So at the end of part four, you may remember that I mentioned two things, and I think I should clarify them uh, a little better, personally. So I mentioned, the first one is that I mentioned that there are other Gundam kits out there that aren't the ones that I went over in part four, which I mainly went over the history of the kits for the most part, and basically got to the big five which are the most important ones to highlight in a history video. Here I'm going to go over the other kits I didn't really, I mentioned real quick, but I didn't go over in detail what they are. Um, and I also mentioned, the second thing is that I mentioned I'm going to go over their their purpose, like what the point of them are, and like the pros and cons. So for that, I am going to do that for these kits I mentioned in, vi in this video. So like, the ones that I'm going over, the no grades and all that. However, I'm not going to be doing that with part six, with, with uh, the big five from the previous video. I'm going to go over those in part six. So I will talk about the purposes of the big five types of kits, but that will be in the next part, not this one. Uh, just wanted to clarify that. Now we're going to move on to the the kits for this video so the first one we're going to go over is the old ones these are the ones that came out in the early 80s they were the classic old school ones that i talked about uh, in the history of gunpla when i first mentioned when they started to come out that they needed to be painted in and in, in i needed glue um and that's that's what they are the purpose of them unfortunately the their purpose has changed over time. Back in the day, it was because you wanted them to have one for your, you know, desire to have a kit of your favorite suit from the show. But as time has move on, moved on, the purpose has changed, and now it's more so for collectors to say that they have the old kit, which is pretty cool, and also for people to practice painting and gluing. That kind of practice is really the best things for it, honestly. Now, when it comes to pros and cons, the cons are way more easy to highlight. Um, for one, they only come in three colors uh, originally. So obviously, painting is mandatory for color separation and detail. Uh, another con is that they need a lot of glue which is great for practicing, but when it comes to actually wanting to get one of these, it goes against everything else that the other kits prepare you for. So you have to keep that in mind. It's great practice for gluing certain things so that you don't overdo glue and stuff like that because it's very easy to over glue a model kit. Uh, but these definitely have that. These are definitely he heavily necessary for glue and paint. Now the pros, however, later on, they started to do their injection or system injection where they can do a few more parts in different colors, uh, which did help a little bit cut down on some of the paint that was needed. But this didn't happen until later, but it also allowed them to mold more detail onto the part itself. However, the most important pro, I think, when it comes to the old ones, is that they had different scales. They had way more scales than were what we have now. Like there are a lot of scales that were made back then that are still made today, but there are a lot of scales that were used that now are used for either certain lines or very specific kits, and they're not used in wide distribution uh, and of course they also had more different types of kits 
that were things like starships and characters and other vehicles that weren't mo suits. Um, but over time, the suits became the main uh, model kits later on. But in this particular series of kits, the old ones, they were just everything was just kind of thrown together and nothing was nothing was categorized, which makes it pretty hard to really explain every little detail about these kits because they're all over the place in certain certain suits only came out in certain scales so you'd have the goof the old style goof but it's only in like this really small scale and it's a rubbery plastic while it's you know the, the suit that it fights the rx you could have it in one to 100 or one to one forty fourth or you know one to two hundredth and all kinds of different scales so every, it was just all over the place and it wasn't necessarily the best line but this is where everything started and you know it is an important line to go over when you're talking about other types of kits so let's move on to the next one the next group is usually referred to by fans as the 80s high grades they're not necessarily real high grades they are just it's just a community name for it but this is actually a really important group because this is where polycap started a softer type of plastic that can be used for joints this allowed for more movement which in obviously increased the articulation these types of kits came out later near the end of the 80s but was a huge part of what made the next group of you know kits were what they are today they also started the snap fit style kits instead of the more traditional kits that we had before these are all snap fit which of course was good they also started to have better uh improvements of technology for injection system molding where they could have multiple colors on one runner but this wasn't heavily used in this particular line of kits just yet that didn't really start to become common until the 90s with high grades and all that now the purpose of these just like before uh, has changed originally it was just to have a kit of zeta or, or uh, double zeta whenever they came out However, of course, this has changed since then, and now, just like the old ones, the 80s high grades, the, their main purpose for most people is to get them for practicing painting. Not so much on gluing, because the snap fit and polycap design has eliminated a lot of glue needed, but on these older kits, even the 80s high grades, they definitely... They definitely needed some glue just to keep them together, but not as much as the old ones. <laughs> the joints were definitely a huge pro for the kit line in general because it helped increase articulation and it just made it more fun to build. Also, with the snap fit style that has become standard for the for the uh, lines. For Gundam kits nowadays was new and it was cool back then it was interesting and it's also interesting to see where that type of building started it is really cool to check it out where it began and to see where it has become is just really really mind-blowing and it's definitely a big part of what makes these kits worth it now the cons on the other hand well are still pretty similar to the other ones they still lack a lot of detail, like surface detailing. They don't look they don't look quite right. They, they do look better. They look closer to what you see in the show, but they're still not a hundred percent when it comes to like proportions and stuff. They're a lot more uh um <clears throat> liberal with the design and kind of do their own thing with some of these kits but they are closer than they were before so that is a pro but it's still a con for the fact that they don't look quite that good 
So that's pretty much it for this kit. We're going to move on to the next one. The next one up is known as First Grades. The first grade kits started as a celebration of the 20th anniversary of Gunpla kits. They are technically re-releases of old, the old ones. So basically they're, they're the old kits from the first part of this video, but redone to be in the snap fit style that have become commonplace in the Gundam kits at this point. However, they are in the same scale as uh, high grades, which means they are a one one forty four scale. They were they're pretty big in Japan, or at least they were, because they're just they're just easy to find and very cheap. And the whole point, uh, their their whole purpose was to be a budget kit so it's for people who are poor it's for people who live in japan who don't have a lot of money and can't afford to spend you know 50 15 thousand yen or 20 or 2000 yen or yeah 2000 yen on a, on a kit like a high grade but you know 300 yen on a uh first grade is more acceptable because that's basically just like three dollars so these would be like at the register when you're trying to check out and the kids like oh can i have this and the parents like yeah it's three dollars go ahead and that way they can actually have a gun to model kit without having to spend a lot more than you want to now that is the that that's the purpose of them the pros, like I said, is that they're cheaper than most of the other kits at the time. And they also give um, older people who remember the old kits a chance to basically recollect them, but this time build them in an easier and simpler fashion. The cons, however, are very, very apparent. Technically, they are an update to the really old molds, so that also means that they lack a lot of detail and they also don't have polycap, so they don't have a whole lot of movement. So they're snap, snap fit builds without polycap, so they have really restricted, really <laughs> restricted movement. They're also, again, only available in the same three colors as they were before, so you'd have to paint them. So the purpose of these kits to be a budget type of kit line is understandable but the problem is is that you have to spend more in the long run to get the tools necessary to make these kits look like the suit they're supposed to you'd have to go out and get brushes paints and of course maybe even a little bit of model kit glue and your typical exacto blade and you know clippers to make this budget kit look decent. So the three dollars you spent on this kit to be cheap, you're basically having to spend that twenty dollars somewhere else when you could have spent those twenty dollars on a high grade and had a much better kit at the end of the day that you didn't have to go out and spend a ton of extra money just to make it look decent. So it kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion. But everyone has their own choices. One big pro, though, that I want to mention here is that these are really good for dioramas. That way you don't have to spend, you know, 20, 15, 30 bucks on a high grade just to, like, break it apart and destroy it and paint it, make it look dirty for a diorama when you can just get a first grade, make it look dirty, dingy, and broken and destroyed and you only had to spend like 4 or $5. The only problem is, is that these kits are a little bit more expensive here in the States because they're not commonplace here. So you have to spend a little bit more. But at this point, it you know, spending like $8 for a kit that should only cost 3 kind of defeats the purpose and the point of the kits. 
So really, as an American, you'd probably be better off with one of the other kit lines. I I just wanted to make that apparent so that you wouldn't go, you know, all crazy and wanting to get just these. And besides, they're only going to be part of the old ones. So that means that the only kits available in first grades are the really old ones. But later, they did start to make them again. But we'll get to that a little bit later in the video, I do believe. Update to the first grade section. I had to go back and look it up so I could uh, do this. But uh, there actually is more kits that came out in first grade. But they are all based in Gundam 00. They came out in 2007, uh, whenever Double O was a thing, to have a lower price point version of the brand new suits. Um, they are slightly different than the other first grades. These have more colors in the box, so there's like more parts that are more color accurate. And on top of that, you can use the like there's some like pictures like in the box or on the covers where you can create a mural of the starship from the show that's pretty cool um so those like might actually be worth looking into just for the mural part uh but that's about it the 2000s is where a new type of kit started called no grades now technically these are not true it's not it's not a true grade of kit but no grades became a part of the common slang in the Gundam community for kits that started in the early 2000s that don't really have any kind of quality control. Uh, but this particular line of, of kits are basically just all over the place. And throughout the years, they've had more and more lines of kits basically join these ranks of no grades. So you can kind of take that for what you will. Now, originally, the original line of kits that started it, uh, the whole point that their main purpose was to be a place where odd and unpopular suits or just random things like starships and other kits that could be used for testing purposes to see how popular they are. They would try some new techniques for certain kits. And if certain kits with these experimental techniques were were uh, popular, they would start to put those techniques or uh, updated technologies into some of the other grades to see how it works. And if it becomes really loved, it will become basically a standard feature later on. Uh, but like I said, you know, this line of kits are, are, is very large. It's a very large group of no grades. And that's basically what it is. You know, they don't have, there's the kits don't have any grades on the box. They're referred to as different, different lines. Like you have full mechanics kits and then you'll have re 100s and then you'll have reborn 100s. Um, and then you have them in smaller scales and then you have them in even, you know, perfect grade scale um, and then of course you have other kits that also fall into this, like the EX models, which are mostly starships there. Are, and, you know, some of the, some of these lines of model kits also have like robots and starships and stuff from other franchises that are not Gundam. So just keep that in mind as well. The pros to this is that they can offer kits of all kinds, like I said before, like starships. Um, however, even though their original purpose was to be another type of low-budget kit, the problem is, is that now they have gotten kind of out of hand, so no grades can almost be just as expensive as their main counterparts which is one of the biggest cons to these this line of kits it's like okay you can spend like forty dollars for the uh you know or fifty dollars for this reborn you know one 100 scale kit or you can spend like 15 extra dollars 
get the master grade and it's a much better a much better kit that's kind of the thing that sucks about these however if there's a reborn 1 100 scale kit or a full mechanics kit that's in 1 100 scale that's very very popular then that could make bandai realize that they should put that kit into master grade and give it basically the love that it deserves this can happen, and we, we're seeing it now with the Dynamis, the Kyrios, and the Virtue, which are double-O kits that should have come out all the way back in 2009 or 2008 and seven, whenever double-O was relevant. But for some reason, they never did, and now we're finally getting them, you know, 13 or however many years later. It's a bit ridiculous in my opinion, but hey, at least we're finally getting them in a master grade scale. So yeah, it's just it's a, a lot of them are kind of pointless. The big five, which are their counterparts, are just much better options for the majority of the suits. The only time a no grade is ever worth it, in my opinion, is when it's a suit or a kit that is not available in any other uh, style. So if you see like a Reborn 1100 that's not available in any other form of kit, like in the big five, it's you can't find it in high grade or anything, then that's the only way to get it, then yeah, it's worth it. But if you can get it in another grade, it's probably going to be a better choice to get it in the other grade. Because you're you're more than likely almost you're paying almost the same price for something that's not you know it's not going to be as good. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. Let's move on to the next one. Bigger is better. Mega sized kits. Now this is a pretty big tall order. <laughs> get it because they're mega sized anyways <laughs> it's funny you know it's funny but in 2010 they started doing a new line of kits called mega sized these kits are in 148 scale so they're actually bigger than perfect grades and you think that that would be like the ultimate kit but just hold on even though they're bigger than perfect grades they're not nearly as good because, well, they're easier and simpler to build. So basically, they're a giant high grade when it comes to the complexity. They're not overly difficult and they're not overly detailed. The purpose of them was for, f for first time collectors that want something big without having to pay for perfect grade price. You'll see more of what I mean by that in part 6. But just so you know. These are not necessarily that cheap of kits either. They can run pretty pretty high up there. But perfect grades will just blow them out of the water when it comes to price. <clears throat> the, shot, the, the size. The, 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 the pros of these kits is that. They are a showstopper when it comes to size. And for most collectors, they can be just awesome on display. They're just awesome show-stopping pieces. And they're decent for the price that you get. But the cons, on the other hand, are pretty big too. They have poor articulation for its size. You would think that something so big would have a lot more articulation similar to, you know, a perfect grade at the very least, which have pretty good articulation for what they are. But unfortunately, these have the same kind of articulation that a typical high grade would have. So they're not terrible by any means, but they're definitely lacking where in other grades like master grade and real grade articulation is pretty damn good typically so they're going to be not as good when it comes to articulation 
And also for the size, they have a lot less detail, like surface detailing on the pieces themselves. Now, you can add as much detail as you want through paint and stickers and different things. Just the mold line, some of the detailing on the molding itself won't be as noticeable or as common as it was before with some of the other kits. And even though they're pretty big for what they are, they kind of suck because you don't have a whole lot of options. They came out 10 years ago, but there's only a handful of mega sized kits you can actually get. This is usually more common for newer kit lines that they don't have many choices, but for something that's been around for 10 years and they still make some new ones from time to time, it kind of sucks that they don't really have that many choices. You have the old school suits like Zaku and original Gundam, and you have Unicorn and a few age kits, and I think think that's pretty much it that's pretty much all the choices you have you have some pretty good ones there but some more choices would be more preferred <clears throat> and the price while not nearly as high as a perfect grade still is a pretty big con because it's still almost around 80 to 100 dollars for a mega sized kit when you can spend like an extra 50 bucks to get a perfect grade which would be far more worth it in the long run when it comes to everything else of course this, this is mostly determined by the person buying it so you might think that they're worth it and that's fine it's just something i want to 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 keep you in mind of that it may not be worth it and the the amount that they offer when it comes to how much there is just really isn't worth it. And the articulation basically being a giant high grade may also not be worth it to you. But if you're someone who really loves big kits and loves putting the bit together big model kits, then mega size might be more up your alley. All right, let's move on to the next one. Entry grade. In 2011, it was an effort to make a low-cost beginner-style budget kit. However, it was discontinued after only four releases because of disappointing sales and also worries of quality control because it was one of the only types of Gundam kits to be produced outside of Japan. They were made in China. However, concerns over quality, of course, led them to discontinue the line. They restarted the line again this year in 2020. So far, there's only one kit in the grade. However, it's supposed to be pretty good. And they have a new color separation technology that they're using in this new form of kit that hopefully will become standard in you know, other types of grades if this particular new technology is actually pretty good. The purpose is to be an easy entry level 1144 scale kit. That's pretty obvious and it might end up replacing the high grade in the future for best starter grade kit. And for any veterans that may be listening out there when it comes to Gundam kits, please keep an eye out on entry grade. It may be worth starting to look at it and see if uh, the newer kits that come out for entry grade will be worth a purchase and see how well they stack up against other kits. The pros is that they're easy to build and very cheap. The cons is that they have less movement and detail due to having less parts than a high grade. Advanced grades. A line of budget kits with a big gimmick, a computer chip that was used with a arcade game in Japan that was basically how you, I guess, how you got access to the game and played it. I really don't know. 
Um, but it had even less articulation. This was also released in 2011. All of these are based on the Gundam Age suits. So they all come from one show, one series. The purpose was to get younger uh, people, younger kids, building Gundam kits at an earlier age so that they could hopefully become lifelong customers. Um, and basically the way to get them involved or interested was to give them something else in the box. So they give them a little computer chip that they can go play a game with. However, they did prove to be pretty unpopular, and so did the show. So these kits now are a little weird because the pros is that they are... that There's really nothing I can think of, honestly. The pros, there, there's no pro of the advanced grade I can think of because they have high-grade... Gundam Age kits that are really good kits. Honestly, they are amazing and they have amazing master grades as well. But the advanced grades are very simplistic. They're basically like entry grades. They're they're a budget kit, but they're also simplistic. They have way less color separation than an entry grade. And the quality of the plastic is just not as good from what I can tell. And from what people have said about them. So really, it's pretty much just cons that I can think of. One of the biggest cons is that they come off a useless chip outside of Japan. And now, they're even useless inside of Japan. Because all of those game arcade machines, I'm pretty sure, are gone by now. It's been almost 10 years. So, what would be the point of them still basically being around? It's just kind of like, there's so much cons to it, it's ridiculous. And they also have less movement and articulation in the detailed part of the kit. You know, you could kind of compare it to a high grades, but the high grade version will always be better because it's a, it's a higher quality grade than advanced grade was. So really, you, you know, the advanced grades are around... Eh, 15 to 10 bucks and if you basically spend like five dollars more you could get a high grade that's a lot better so really what was what would be the point of getting these kits there's really no pros to the advanced grades unfortunately except for maybe collecting them that'd be the only thing i could think of off the top of my head all right we're gonna move on to a few more that i kind of have to write on the i had the kind of put them over to the side as a little footnote to remember but we'll see why in a second real quick i want to mention speed grade see what i did there <laughs> it's funny they are in one 200 scale they're not cheap by any means because of basically age because they've only came out for a short time they do come with a stand and two were in bags and two came in boxes. So this one was pretty cool, but it only had four kits come out. And that's really it. I know nothing else. I cannot find any more information about these kits. What what their purpose was, I don't know. I'm guessing they were supposed to be a entry-level kit back in the day. But ever since then, they have become more popular now than they used to be. So maybe that's why they're so expensive now. Or maybe they were always expensive. They look kind of like action figures. Like they were meant to basically be an action figure. I don't know. I cannot find anything else on these kits that I've looked all over the place. You would think I'd be able to find it on like Gundam fan wikis or something. Or even at forums. But I can't find any information on them. So if you have any extra information on these kits and the next few ones that I mentioned, please leave a comment explaining what you know. I would appreciate it. It would be pretty cool to see. And lastly, I also want to talk about P. Bandai here in this particular kit or in this particular video. So just like with all the others, you know, 
I try to do as much research as I could. However, as a Gumpla builder, I know what they are. However, the problem is, is that I cannot find anything on them, again, even on the wikis. All it says is they're basically a premium kit. And it's like, yeah, I know that. And most people do. Because P Bandai means premium Bandai for a reason. However, that's all there is. There's not much on the history of them. So I don't even know when these things started. And I couldn't begin to tell you. Nor, have, nor can I um, explain how they've evolved over time. Because there really hasn't been any information of uh, on them out there when it comes to the history of the kit or anything. But what I can tell you is what their purpose is uh, from the perspective of someone who's been building them for a while. And basically, they're just a easy way for Bandai to get more money out of their customers. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what it is. Because a lot of these kits kind of feel like they should just be a standard release. The only ones I can kind of understand being P Bandai are ones that are like some kind of unique like molding. Like they are done in a, a new type of plastic or something like they're they're a different finish like they're chrome or gold finishes or something. And of course the ones that are like clear and ones that are like a different color variation. Those are the ones that I can kind of understand premium Bandai kits. Ones that I do not understand are ones that are, for example, just a variant of another kit. Like, for example, my Jesta Cannon Master Grade is a P Bandai. Why? When the regular Jesta is a master grade and is a normal kit. So because I wanted the Canon, I had to spend like $123 when the just a Canon master grade should have probably only been honestly $55, maybe 60. It shouldn't have cost that much more, but they knew they could get away with it. If they made the, basically the amount of kits limited for basically making it more expensive on purpose. It kind of sucks that they do this kind of things, but it's just part of the, the evils of, uh, you know, <laughs> being a, a company, I guess. Now there are some pros to P Bandai because, because they are limited. It's nice when you get, one of these limited edition or limited run kits because they're not widely available. So it's nice to have them. The cons on the other hand are pretty big and that is mostly price and how limited that they actually are. Um, and also unnecessary releases in P Bandai having things that should be just a standard release be limited for no reason and also having weapon packs and variants of suits that the only difference is that they come with different weapons and uh, accessories. Those BMP Bandai releases are just annoying. So I wanted to get that out there as well. Uh, and obviously, of course, like I said before, price. Oh, God, the price of P Bandai is ridiculous. I just want to make sure everyone, you know, got got that in there. I told you I would make I would explain more about P Bandai in the next video and I kept my promise. It's just most of what I was looking for, like when they started it and when they created it and why they created it, really wasn't there. But basically being a fan of Gundam for so long and building these kits for so long, you kinda know what their purpose is to basically rob you. <laughs> but um <clears throat> that's it. So thank you for watching, everyone. Please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you want, you can share the video and comment down below if you have any extra information to add about ones that I couldn't really find anything on. And um, that's really it. So, you know, see you next time. And Yokai is out, y'all.